So, are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. That's not good enough. Are you ready? So we're just making it up as we go. The way it's going to work is I'm going to say a word. You guys will say whatever word you think is associated with that. And then we will come up and tell three stories based off of that word. And then all of our scenes will be inspired um, by those stories. So to get us going, I'm going to say a word. So when I say the word dog, what's the first word that comes to mind? You can just yell it out. Um, so the uh, only traffic story I have, I'll make it brief. I was in Los Angeles for a time, uh, driving up the 405. It has probably hundreds of thousands of people on there every day. A truck was disabled uh, in the middle of the freeway, and I was driving out of North Hollywood into the uh, west side, and there was a traffic jam in rush hour that lasted about four hours. And in my anger, and in my existential dread of like trying to go to work and being so late that it doesn't even matter anymore, I calculated, I think, somewhere around like a million hours of lost time, which is like 80 years of <laughs> because of a single truck uh, in the middle of the highway. Um, so if it helps you when you're in traffic, just dread the lost time and just weep for humanity, and that's what you're going to take away from traffic. <laughs> Of course, none of us had done anything. We had, we had no idea 
what he was talking about. So that he made all of the people whose desks were on the ground go out and then to the rest of us. I didn't have my desk turned over because I'm a, a star student. Um, but he had, he basically told us like, I want you guys to um, make them cry when they come back. And so when they were coming in, we all just gave them glares and started not screaming because we're children, but just like, you know, mean things that you could say, like, I don't like your shirt. Um, and then they went and told their parents. <laughs> and uh, the next day, we had one of their parents uh, observing our classroom. <laughs> up that idea, you know? Oh. Just to spice it up a little bit. You know, I've got like, you know, Maybe. a little bit of time. I need, I need some spice. Tell like five kids in your class that they're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just okay. This is intriguing. Yeah. This is really intriguing. Because like, parent-teacher night coming up. <laughs> and, uh, I could use a little spice. <laughs> Honestly, right? You yeah. seem like you were a little down. I wanted to give you a little bit of a help. Yeah, I, I will say I'm a little concerned because, like, some of my kids have anxiety disorder. Oh, those are the best ones to go for. I they lose their minds. Oh. I told this kid, uh, he was like a little early guy. Uh, he was really anxious about, like, having all of his school supplies. I'm like, that kid is definitely going to freak out when I come. <laughs> and I just kind of, like, pulled him aside one day. He thought he was in trouble. Like, he is in a certain way because this is, like, mortal trouble. <laughs> <laughs> But I was like, uh, Bill, man, you've been a great addition to the class. So I'm building his hopes up, right? You've been a stellar person in the classroom. You did great on your spelling test. You're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe soon. So, like, how soon after that did the tears just kind of like. You know what's weird is he didn't even cry, he just like grew pale. Oh, fuck, is it like the haunted look? Yeah, it's like, amazing. You gotta be careful with those kids. You're They're like, probably getting it at home, too. Yeah, for oh, real. I let the parents know. <laughs> just so you know, like, I let the parents know I was doing this, too. And, uh, you know, they weren't that upset about it, I guess. Like, yeah, that's chill. Ooh, shit, dude, that's fucked up. I mean, it's been a crazy year. I kids mean, gotta know that shit's gonna, like, come down or they're gonna die. Like, it's gonna happen. It's a dark side, but you're, yeah. you're building up like a school shooter here. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, to be honest, like, I would probably, I would probably veer away from that a little bit. Like, I'm just going to instill the existential dread that creates, like, poetry out of the kid. Not, like, so far that they, oh, like, okay. do so. So musician. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, in your music class, I would say, like, it might even inspire some of the kids' better work. You know? I like that. Yeah, yeah. nothing but existential. existential you still play the recorders in your class? Little, uh... Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing they can play. Imagine awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, the kind of tones you get out of a kid on the recorder who's like... Like miserable? <laughs> like, you know, it's all like useless, like there's yeah. no God. Oh my God, you're going even <laughs> further. Oh, I'm just like, know. at least there's an afterlife. Man, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> man, I wonder what that would do. favorite part of the song is when we get to play the really high notes because it makes me think of how young I am and how all of life is in front of me. You know, when I hear those loud notes, which is always out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> better, is better. I have such a long life to live. Oh. I'll get better. I'll be the best recorder player in 10, 20, 30 that's, years. Absolutely it's well. Such a long life ahead. I just think of like the internal screams of a, a idea that all of this is just gonna, the whole universe is gonna blink out of existence when it's whimper. Entropy just maxing out. No life, no suns, no flowers. A truly deep and dark sensation that all of this is for naught. The pain, the effort, the ecstasy. Just <laughs> It's a 
dog in my apartment today. Oh, okay. Let's talk about it. You know, I'm so scared of dogs. Like how I got a bite here like one year ago. Like every time I see the dog, I feel the twitch here like, ooh. So it's some kind of phobia that you're feeling. Yeah. yeah. I'm feeling very shaky. Shaky, okay. Can um, I come and live with you? As <laughs> <laughs> your therapist, I kind of feel like that's inappropriate, but let's talk more about this feeling. But about I paid my consultation fee. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that, and I'm, I'm a very expensive therapist. But you promised to protect your patients. <laughs> yeah, that's in a more emotional sense. What you're talking about is more of a physical. Not even for a night, like a single <laughs> night. <laughs> Very pretty, but no, unfortunately. Um, don't you have some place you can go? I thought yours. My place. Yeah. Um, did you get dropped off here by yourself? I took an Uber. <laughs> okay, um, hold on a second. Jenna? Do you have a dog with you? I can smell a dog. Do you have a dog with you? I feel like I'm really stressing. Get, get Paige oh out of here. A get Paige out. You need to take him to your home. You okay. need to take him to your home. Jenna. Jenna, you're not coming in. I can't feel my legs. Oh my I can't feel so my legs. Sorry. Thank <laughs> you. 